So at the end of 2018, uh, we announced the completion of the 100,000th genome uh, that was part of the 100,000 Genome Project. If the first goal was to benefit the patient, the second goal was to provide a new foundation for research to better understand our genome and better understand how to treat it. The third goal was to build the infrastructure for future implementation in routine healthcare for the National Health Service itself. The fourth goal was a more national one. This is a new field and it should be fostering uh, economic growth, new businesses, new research agendas, uh, and ultimately new treatments for patients. This was a project that aimed to really take all the learnings of our technology development, the potential for genomics and genome technology to help in human health. It focused on rare genetic disease and on cancer, and we aimed to set it in a national environment. We were doing the whole genome because the answer would be in there somewhere, for every, any disease, whatever it is. Uh, looking at the ethical questions, the technical questions, the logistical questions, how to handle the data, and how to interpret it to ultimately give medically relevant information back. There's a great deal of history that leads up to this. People ask me all the time, how did it happen? What do I have to do to do it in my country? And the answer is probably many countries are different, but the UK story does have a number of, of, of lessons. The first thing that happened, I think, is that a series of collaborations. Leaders who were advising governments and scientific policy in, in, in the UK came together uh, and actually came up with the concept of seeing, is this going to be useful in healthcare? Let's ask that question. And let's specifically ask it of whole genomes. Then, very importantly, the scientific advisors to the UK government felt it was time. And that was a very exciting moment because I think that really showed how many people had come together, the scientists and the doctors with their collaborations, us, the technologists who were working hard to make it cheaper and faster, but then the government, represented by, by the leader himself, the prime minister, who absolutely got it. And he said one other thing. He said, I don't want it spent on research. We're doing a lot of research. I want it spent on actual medical applications. One other important milestone in that the particular group in Cambridge who had started a 10,000 genome project a year before the 100,000 genome project started. And that gave us practice of a large project, uh, practice in negotiations and contracts and how to really establish such a partnership. And this became, in fact, the pilot for the 100,000 genomes. August the 1st, 2014, the CEO of Illumina, so Jay Flatley and John Chisholm, the CEO of Genomics England, uh, shook hands uh, in number 10 in the signing of the contract. The partnership was a, a complementary relationship, but also a, a synergistic one. Illumina took on the responsibility of setting up the technology to work at a scale that nobody had done before to sequence 100,000 genomes to provide the data, align it, reassemble the genome to a decoded version, and to provide that to Genomics England. And Genomics England, for its part, would work at both ends of this process. They would engage the patients and the doctors and collect the samples. They would do the consent uh, and look at all the ethical approval required for the program. Uh, they would do public engagement of both the medical professionals and scientific professionals and the general public and the patients. And then at the other end, they would take the genomes from Illumina and they would interpret them and send reports back to the doctors for return to the patients to see to what extent and how it had an impact on the understanding of the disease in each individual patient and bounded at either end by the patients and the doctors themselves. And as Sally Davis, the chief uh, medical officer of the UK said, when the contract was signed, it starts with the patient and ends with the patient. And that remained a very important, focused perspective, both for Illumina and for Genomics England. And now I think uh, 75,000 reports have gone back. Uh, that is most of the results have now gone back to the patients. At the first pass, it looks like a quarter of the people who suffer a rare genetic disease now have a diagnosis, an explanation. And that's after just the first pass. And one of the beauties of the human genome, having all the information present, is that actually when new discoveries are made, which explain new diseases, we find new genes involved, actually you can go back to the person's genome and just have a look. You don't have to do another test. 
you just have to have another look. In many studies, I think outside the Genomics England project, we've seen that in a year, perhaps 25% more diagnoses can be made than the previous year because of the nature of research running alongside uh, and actually continuing to add information to the human genome itself. Cancer, a second uh, good result. 7,000 were picked out to have a look at what the impact of the genome was on the cancer. I think some 50% of those cases, Genomics England of the team found a mutation or information that potentially might alter the management of the cancer patient. And that was tremendous. And finally, to go back to what was one of the first promises of the Human Genome Project itself, voiced by Francis Collins, how to tailor treatment to the individual. From the Genomics England, a subset of some 6,000 patients, 72% of the cases they looked at actually had valuable information about how to tailor the treatment and prescription of drugs better to suit the individual. And this is a real milestone. This is the illustration of the concept of tailored medicine. If you sequence a person's genome, it tells you something about the person. And as a result, you can treat that person with what they really need. The promise explicitly stated of the 100,000 Genome Project is now coming true.